Hi, um, we're here looking at the uh, my old valve Tesla coil. I've got it in bits; it may not be recognisable like this. This is the GU81 uh, tube in here, and I've got it in bits. We had try I've tried to make a few modifications to it uh, based on some suggestions by Steve on uh, tested to destruction. So I said make a video, so put this together. The uh, First thing was to disconnect the ground connection we have on one of the grids and put all three grids together to basically drive it as a as a triode. And uh, that did actually seem to make a small improvement on the, the, the length of the arcs, which is quite interesting in its own right. Uh, but shortly after I blew uh, one of the, the smoothing, well this capacitor is a filter capacitor on the, the anode voltage supply. Uh, they're not very good so I'm not too surprised it blew but um, obviously I've got to change that and get a new one. Um, but that's kind of led on to other changes as well. The capacitor I was going to change it with is an improved one. This is a much tougher one. Uh, but uh, as you can see, it's a bit tight for space in here. So we're going to make another change. We're going to take this uh, capacitor bank out which uses the um, microwave oven capacitors um, so there's almost four microfarads here now i reckon it could benefit with an increase in that anyway but again not much space for doing that unless i go for electrolytic um, this is the same value and a much higher voltage so i've got 4.3 uh, microfarad at 4.5 kV which is actually more or less double what the, the microwave wants voltage wise. The only thing is we're using electrolytics with, uh, and that's something I haven't tried so whether they can survive the kind of noise in this circuit will be interesting um, but that's, so that's a test there as well but that'll let me get the better capacitor in here as well and then we can take it from there as a test. Uh, I may add another couple of diodes here just to make sure the diode, less chance of the diodes feeling because that would take the capacitors out as well. So these are a few changes. Normally I would recommend anybody who's doing any changes on these you do one change at a time uh, because you make lots of changes you don't know where you are if you've got to go back which which made the difference and which didn't. So normally one step at a time but this case we're trying a few and we'll see what we get with it. So first of all I got to try and get a better way or a safer way of mounting these capacitors here. This was our original setup with the um, Tesla coil. Changes that were suggested by Steve were to get rid of this round, connect that in there um, for strength to break down another couple of diodes in here. And we got rid of these for a string of electrolytics. So we now have an electrolytic set up here. Same kind of values though. Okay, you're just about ready to go back. So that's the uh, everything, the modifications done. I've connected our grid connection to the three grids uh, common. Uh, this is their mock transformer. I've got uh, th two pairs of diodes here in three in series and the capacitor, the modified capacitor is here. This is our now 4.5 kV electrolytics in here and we've got a, a large kind of snubber or, or filter capacitor here now on the, at the output or the, to the voltage supply to the anodes here. So it's really just a case of putting everything together again. I've been making quite a few changes to this so um, hopefully, hopefully it's not going to catch me out. So I need to connect the, the anode to the uh, tank circuit and, and the supply to the other side of that. So that's that connected. I need the feedback coil to the grid connection. And this top panel also has its own ground there as well. So I'm just about ready to put it all back together. There. So we're doing the stage we can just test this. The Tesla coil on a variac here just to test it out. This is its first run. So we have a variac to the current zero and we can power up the heat 
centers and controls separately. So let's now apply the anode voltage. There we go. That's about 220. 